Good morning, everyone from around the country and beyond. Happy August. Uh, some of you may be following the Tokyo Summer 2020 Olympics. Uh, I had a chance to watch a game last night. But yeah, 11,000 athletes from over 200 countries are competing in over 300 events. And um, it's a 16 day process. And right now, about halfway through, US is leading in the number of medals and is second in gold. Uh, you know, I was looking at the stats and it was interesting because most of the gold in any country or the leading countries are in one particular sport, if you can guess. For the US, uh, we lead in swimming. That's where we get most of our medals. And in China, interestingly, they lead in weightlifting medals. Um, if you're asking about Japan, it's judo. And for Korea, you might think it's Taekwondo, but actually they get most of their medals through archery. And, you know, Canada is hosting National Family Service today. So just a little acknowledgement and shout out to Canada. They did beat America yesterday in the women's beach volleyball in the first round. So anyway, it's fun uh, just seeing all the countries coming together uh, and competing in a peaceful way. Uh, it really shows solidarity around the world. So in honor of all the athletes competing in the Olympics, I wanted to share today on the topic of pursuing excellence. So when thinking about this question of why choose to excel, one of the first thoughts that came to mind was a movie called Chariots of Fire. I don't know, it's an old movie, so I don't know if uh, many of the younger ones know, but uh, it's a story where a Christian runner is competing in the Olympics and he testifies that it's through his running that he's able to experience God. So let's take a look. Here's a quote. I believe God made me for a purpose, but he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. You know, I believe that one of the main reasons to pursue excellence is to experience this joy, your, your mind's desire, your original mind's desire to grow and reach for your potential. So I was curious to see if the scriptures had anything to say about this topic of excellence. So let's take a look. This is in Philippians chapter four, verse eight. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. You know, this book, uh, it's actually a letter, a uh, series of letters that Paul wrote and this particular one is uh, where Paul wrote to the congregation in Philippi. And what I got out of it was that he was really encouraging the members to pursue excellence in all things. From my experience, when, when we or when I pursue excellence in something, I get a clear sense of direction and purpose and focus. And it allows me to be more productive and experience fulfillment. You know, I was uh, an immigrant coming to America. My, my family moved when I was a couple years old from Japan. And uh, at home, we only spoke English. I mean, Japanese, not English. We didn't speak English. That was a challenge. So when I went to elementary school, um, yeah, English was a second language. In fact, it took them a while, but I think in second grade, I had to go to ESL, English as a second language class, uh, because my English wasn't proficient. I guess they, they didn't figure it out the first two years, or maybe they didn't have ESL until second grade. So anyway, I started there, but I remember early on, my parents really encouraged me to study. And although it was very challenging at first, uh, I grew to really enjoy the pursuit of uh, my academics and doing well. 
And I remember getting to a point where even the optional activities, I know I sound like a nerd, but I, I really enjoyed like crossing off all the tasks that I needed to do, these different like manuals and uh, completing them one by one. So by the time I was uh, finishing elementary, I was able to uh, become the valedictorian of, of my whole uh, class. You know, another uh, experience I had in pursuing excellence, I remember in 10th grade, uh, one summer, I was preparing for college. And so I went to the library and we were poor, so I couldn't actually buy one of those SAT prep books. I had to borrow the book, make my own answer key sheet to, to scribble in the answers and went through 10 tests straight. Um, it was kind of grueling, but... Uh, I, I really wanted to master and understand the, the formatting of the test so that I can, I can do well. But beyond academics, also in sports, in college, I, was, uh, I started Taekwondo as a part of the team sport for, for UPenn. And one of the things that I really enjoyed was the forms competition. And when you pursue, when I pursued this, this area of Taekwondo, I, I noticed that as I became more and more invested in the sport, I started to notice the finer details on the difference between good and great. And the difference is very subtle. But when I invested myself into the training so much that I could actually notice and understand those subtleties, there was this kind of sense of, I don't know how to explain it, but like this, this joy or fulfillment that comes only through mastery. Uh, you know, things like the, the proper, perfect angle to put your arm in for the block uh, or the way that you snap your, your fist at the very end of a move and you twist it to, to, to get sharp and even make make sound while punching air. Like these little details uh, was what really made uh, mastery so exciting. And actually when you watch people who are masters in their, in their art or in their, in their sport, it's really thrilling and exciting to see that level of control, of movement, of mind and body unity. And I think that's really, um, really some of the value of this pursuit of excellence. So as exciting as it is to pursue excellence, uh, especially when you had a chance to taste it, there are some key challenges that come with pursuing excellence. I think the first and foremost challenge is the fear of failure. I know many times people decide not to pursue something because they feel like they can't be good at it or they can't be the best at it. Actually, this sense of perfectionism can be um, an Achilles heel to some people because if they feel like I need to be perfect at something in order to really invest in it, then it might actually discourage you to even try. Also, excellence requires a lot of persistence and the willingness to face the kind of challenges that naturally comes as a result of pursuing it. But if we really understand that, you know, every mistake, well, actually we'll get to that at the very end. We're gonna get into the secret of that when we get there. But let's look at what it takes to pursue excellence. Let's read, a successful soccer team will invest its full energies into a 90 minute game. In making a single run for the goal, a player will invest every bit of energy that he can call up as if his life depended on it. This is similar to what God went through as he created the world. To pour out everything we have to offer ourselves up completely for the sake of one moment in time. This is how greatness is achieved and how humankind comes to resemble God. So this is from... Father Moon's autobiography as a peace-loving global citizen. So what he's mentioning here is that in order to achieve greatness, it requires this 100% focus. And interestingly, he 
he parallels this this focus to what God experienced when creating us, creating creation and ultimately us. And whenever we pursue excellence, in, in one sense, we come to resemble God. Because God actually created us with that same level of focus and excellence. And going back to my college years in, in Taekwondo, I, I remember training harder than any of my other teammates. Uh, part of it was because I've always wanted to fit into that um, kind of cliche of being Asian and uh, being able to do martial arts. But actually going to school in martial arts is quite expensive. Um, but in college, it was very affordable because I was a student. So there was a nominal fee, but most of the training was relatively cheap or, or, or free. As long as you pay the fee, it was there. So I practiced like two hours a day, you know, five hours a week. You know, academics was really challenging at UPenn, but I, I remember deciding this is something I wanted to invest in. So I did that. I remember one time uh, it was, uh, oh, I think it was a holiday weekend, uh, but it was a Friday and many people were, were not at school, um, also it was pouring rain. But you know, once I decide to do something, I'm pretty committed. So I remember running through the rain, getting to the dojo, and looking around, and there was nobody else there except the instructors. And even the instructors, there's usually like a handful of them, but there were only a couple instructors. So it was literally just the instructors and me of a class of about 30, you know, members. And it was amazing. I mean, I felt like the instructor was moved to see me there and he, he really poured out his heart and his expertise to raise me up. Now, the challenge was uh, the first match that I went to, I lost. And, you know, I, you know, I trained a lot, but I lost. And, you know, I was like, OK, it's one time. But then the second match that I went to, I also lost. And it was devastating because I was like, I'm working so hard. But I can't win a, a sparring match. And um, I really questioned myself whether I should continue. But when I spoke with my instructors, they really actually apologized to me. They said that their training was off. And from observing how I fought that match, they actually adjusted their training so that we would actually kick through the paddle instead of stopping at the paddle. And so after that, they, they changed their style of training and um, subsequently, I, I never lost a match after that for the rest of the, my career in college. So my point is, is that in anything that we pursue in excellence, there will be challenges. But what really allows us to, to, to really experience the full joy of it is to overcome and persist through those challenges uh, to reach, reach that level of mastery. So there's much to gain in pursuing excellence. And I wanted to look one step deeper into another important reason why we should pursue excellence. So let's read from Father Moon's autobiography uh, to really get a perspective on what is God and true parents' perspective on excellence. Let's read. We were all created to be great men and women. God did not send us into this world without purpose. When God created us, he invested his complete love into each person. So we were all created for greatness. Because God exists, we can accomplish anything. This is a really powerful statement. Basically, Father Moon is saying, God created all of us to be great. We are designed for excellence. So in one sense, you know, God in, in our community, we really see God as our heavenly parent. And as our parent, we, I feel like, you know, if God created us with this kind of design to be excellent, you know, actually, let me back up a little bit. In Genesis, when God created the world, he created all things. And the final thing that he created in preparation uh, he prepared all other things in preparation for the final creation, which was us, uh, human beings as his children. 
So really, everything was designed for the sake of us as human beings. So I believe as children of God, we owe it to God to explore our potential and to pursue excellence in, in our lives. Let's read some more. Parents want to see that their children become more successful and better than them. We also realize that husbands and wives all hope that their spouses are better persons than themselves before they get married. In the same principle, God created man as his children and gave his blessing to them to become better than God himself. This is true love. From this perspective, human beings live with God as his children and have the same value as God himself. Wow. Really, you know, this is profound. What, what Father Moon is saying is that God, because of true love, God, as a parent, wants us as his children to be even better than him. You know, that might be mind-blowing theologically, but if you really see it from the perspective of love, and if we really believe that God is our parent, then anyone who is a parent can understand that we want our children to be better than us. We want the best for our children. We want our children to reach and fulfill and pursue their potential. That's exactly how God feels about each of us. Let's read some passages from the first book of Mother Moon's anthology. Your purpose in studying and attending school should not be about entering a good university or university or securing a high paying job. Your most important goal must be to complete the three great blessings given to us by God and become a person that practices loving God, loving people and loving your nation. This is very interesting because most people, when they're thinking of pursuing excellence, they're thinking about getting into a good school, getting a high paying job, really uh, getting a position of high influence and reputation. But here, Mother Moon is saying that we should pursue excellence for the sake of, she says here, fulfilling the three great blessings. Now, just as a recap, those three great blessings are to be fruitful which means to mature your heart and love, to multiply, which means to create a beautiful family centered on that love, and three, to have dominion over all creation, which is in this area of mastery. So mastery and making your contribution. So Mother Moon here is saying that we should pursue excellence, excellence not just for our sake, but for the sake of your family, for the sake of maturing your love, for the sake of being a contribution to society. Let's read one more passage from the same book. I hope each of you will pursue and develop your dream in your chosen field and bring healing to the earth. For this, you will need specialized knowledge and expertise. If you all join forces, follow your parents' teachings and live up to them, your hopes and your dreams can be realized. In order to make that happen, each of you must become the best in your field. I will support you unreservedly to help you achieve that. So here, Mother Moon is really encouraging all of us to become the best in our field of study and expertise for the sake of healing the earth. And she really wants to support us in pursuing our dreams. You know, when I uh, was graduating from college, I, I really had to make a decision in terms of what I wanted to do with my career. And I could have pursued a career in Wall Street like my colleagues, but I chose to invest in our community because I felt like that's what God wanted me to do. And also because I felt like my investment in our community would reap greater returns than the money I might have made in Wall Street. And what I mean by that is from the example of 
father, mother, moon, you know, they invested so much into uh, God's providence, into the people. And within their lifetime, this small community that started with a cardboard hut in North Korea or South Korea became this worldwide movement with members and communities in all uh, countries throughout the world. So I, I truly believe that when we invest, uh, pursue excellence, but invest for the sake of a greater purpose, then the returns are tremendous. So whatever you're doing, uh, pursue it with excellence. And just as importantly, find a way to offer it for the greater good. So now we're at our secret, the secret to continuing your pursuit of excellence. You know, in pursuing excellence, there are many challenges that we face. Um, but one secret to overcoming uh, the main challenge, which is uh, the obstacles and the, the failures, is that know that there is no such thing as failure. There's no such thing as long as you learn from it. In fact, it's these failures that become the building blocks for your future success. So embrace failure. Don't be afraid of failure. Actually look forward to it because through the failure, you can actually learn and grow into becoming who you need to be in order to achieve the success you're looking for. So when we change our mindset around failure and see it as something as part of the natural process, then we won't be afraid of failing. We won't be afraid of looking bad or of, of not making the goal because if you see that that's actually part of the process towards excellence, towards achieving your goal, then it's no longer uh, a problem to actually fail. So that's the secret in pursuing excellence is to embrace the failure, know that failure is built is a building block towards your success. And you can truly take off the brakes. I mean, <laughs> don't be uh, pressing the accelerator and brakes at the same time. You can release the emergency brakes and really pursue uh, without fear and fearlessly grow towards excellence. So in conclusion, all of those 11,000 Olympians had to make a choice to focus and pursue excellence in their respective sports. One of the beauties of the Olympics is that it also brings the world together in peaceful competition and global camaraderie. I remember watching a commercial where it was showing not just the victories, but actually when people fell in the race or they bumped into each other and they, they were kind of disqualified, but they would get up and they would help their opponent to continue to finish the race. So the spirit of Olympics is not just about being the best and representing your country, but really coming together as a global community in the spirit of healthy uh, competition, um, but really this camaraderie among the different nations uh, through sports. So we may not all be Olympians, but we can all practice the same pursuit of excellence and thereby tap into our potential as human beings. And some of you might think, I'm too old. Well, you're never too old to pursue excellence. You're never too young to pursue excellence. In fact, whatever challenges you're facing right now, that adds to the story when you overcome it of the power uh, of being human, the power of intention, the power that God gave each and every one of us to be able to achieve anything we desire in terms of pursuit. So I wanna encourage everyone here, uh, challenge each of you to choose one area at least in your life to pursue excellence in and if you're already pursuing it, then continue to pursue, persevere through the challenges that will come. And let's offer this excellence for the greater good, uh, not just for ourselves, but really in honor of God as our parent who designed us 
with excellence in mind. Let us pursue, let us fulfill our potential as human beings and do it for a greater purpose. May God bless each of you this week in all of your endeavors. Mm-hmm.